Right, chapter seven, probably one of my favourite chapters. Radians, okay. Um, and we're obviously going to be able to convert between radians and degrees, calculate sector areas in radians, arc length. Oh, and I've spelled arc wrong. I've put, um, calculate R. This is supposed to be arc length. Okay, um, arc length, um, we're going to be using sine and cos rule in radians. We've just been using that in degrees, so it's really easy. Um, you're obviously going to understand why we use radians and degrees. This is something that you know we should be, as mathematicians, don't just take it that I'm saying we're going to use radians instead of degrees. Why do you think it's useful to use radians? Have a think about that. Um, and you know, you need to distinguish the difference between them and why they're important. So, chapter seven, we are really going to look at converting between degrees and radians, which is completely new for you, okay? Then we're going to find arc length and sector area. You've done that in GCSE, but instead of using degrees, we're going to use radians. It's a little bit new, it's a little bit the same, okay? To be honest, it's more the same than it is new. So then, what we have here is we have... Radians. So we know degrees. There's 360 degrees in a circle. Okay. A radian. Sometimes we shorten it. You know mathematicians are lazy. We call it a rad. Okay. A rad. Or a radian. Okay. Is one rad. Okay. So... When we are, we don't write the degree symbol, we write rad, because we're not working in degrees, okay? So our unit is rad. So, the rad is the movement of one radius. Okay, so normally our radius is from the centre to here, but imagine we have our radius in arc length. Now we know there is a correlation between radius and um, circumference, we know that 2 pi r equals the circumference, okay? That's saying that 2 pi lots of the radius is what the circumference is. So it's 2 pi lots of the radius, no matter what the radius is. So we now know that 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi. So, why do we use radians? Well, Later on, we're going to find out that sine differentiates to cos. I know, it's going to be amazing, isn't it? Do you remember when we did differentiation in our IGCSE? Okay, we're going to start differentiating trig functions and all sorts. It's going to be amazing. So, because we normally use trig functions in calculus, we get to use them a lot when we differentiate and integrate. Um, radians are used as a default angle. A default unit for the angle instead of degrees, okay? Because as we said, you know, if we just had a look at 0 to 360 degrees, it wouldn't really correlate with a graph if we were looking at the intersections of a sine graph, for example, and a quadratic at the same time. They would both need to be in the same unit and radians will allow us to do that. So then, we know that 180 is pi. So, what we're going to do is, if you know that 180 is pi, how do we convert and how could we find the rest? Cool, so here we go. Uh, 180 degrees, well, we're going to divide by 180 and times by pi. Okay, then going backwards, we're going to divide by pi and then, oh, times by 180. Divide by pi times by 180. So, go in there. So, from... Degree to rad, to radians, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to multiply by pi over 180. If you're going from radians to degree, you're going to multiply by 180 over pi, okay? So, for example, 90 degrees, you multiply that by pi over 180, so that becomes 90 pi over 180, which equals pi over 2. Now, some of you might not need a formula for that because you know 180 degrees is pi, so 90 degrees is half of 180, so it must be pi over 2. Mm -hmm. Pi over 3 is 60 degrees, and I did that in my head, 
because I know that's going to be pi over 3 multiplied by 180 over pi. So it's 180 divided by 3, which is 60. OK, very quickly, can you fill in the rest for me? OK, then, so 45 degrees is going to be um, pi over 4. Pi over 6 is 30 degrees. 135 degrees is, is it 3 over 2 pi? 3 over 4 pi. Or 3 pi over 4. 3 over 2 pi, oh, that's 270 degrees? 72 degrees? 2 pi over 5. Brilliant. And 5 pi over 6. 115. 150 degrees. Perfect. Yeah, so 2 pi over 5 and 2 over 5 pi are exactly the same. If you think about it, 2 over 5 pi means 2 over 5 times pi. When we multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators together and the denominator. And any number, for example pi, um, if you wanted to turn that into a fraction, would be pi over 1. So that's the same as saying 2 pi over 5 times 1, which is 5. So they are exactly the same. Um, personally, I don't think we need to do any more of these. But if you did, you know where to find them. Um, okay then, so... When we are drawing our sine, cos and tan graphs, instead of writing them in terms of degrees, we're going to write them in terms of pi. So, it should be nice and easy. Instead of 90 degrees, we know it's going to be pi. Instead of 100, uh, sorry, 180, it's pi. Instead of 360, 2 pi. 90, pi over 2. So, all we're changing is the x-axis. We're not changing the y-axis, okay? So then, what we're going to do is we're going to sketch the graph, okay, which I know we all love doing. Now, when we sketch the graph, we've also got a transformation. And you can see here very clearly that it is between 0 and 2 pi. So that we now know, because it's between 0 and 2 pi, it wants us to draw the graph in terms of radians. Mm -hmm. Step 1, draw the graph of cos of x first. Step two, apply the transformation. I'm going to give you a minute to try and see how far you can get. Okay, so step one, draw the cos graph. Now whenever I draw this graph, I know it cuts. There we go. Okay, and I'm not going to fill in um, everything, but I do know that this is pi. Pi over two. 3 pi over 2, and then this is going to be 2 pi. Okay. It's inside the bracket, so it affects the x-axis. It adds, it tells us plus pi over 2, so we're actually going to take away pi over 2 from all of our um, x-coordinates. So, remember, it's between 1 and minus 1. Now here, this is pi over 2, 0. If I shift this to the left, pi over 2... We're going to see that the graph is going to start from here and finish. So it's going to look like um, this is actually going to be bonus points for anyone who can write this graph in terms of sine whilst I draw it. So, graph is going to look like this. We know here this is 2 pi. This is going to be pi. Okay. This is 3 pi over 2, this is pi over 2, this is 1, and this is minus 1. So we've drawn our graph. Our graph is also between 0 and 2 pi. And this is the graph of cos x plus pi over 2. We could also write this graph in terms of sine. I wonder, did anyone figure out what this was in terms of sine? Okay, so we've got minus sine of x. Well, let's think about this. Is it inside or outside the bracket? Outside. So this is going to affect the y-coordinates. And as we know, if it's a minus a function, it's a reflection in the x-axis, which is exactly what this is. Absolutely fantastic. I know it says a reminder of the laws from year one, 
but we're still in year one, so don't worry about that. It's because um, this is A-level UK spec, not international, okay? So then, um, to find cos and tan of common angles in radians without using a calculator, it's just easier to convert it to degrees first, okay? So we can convert to degrees and then find out. But what we're going to do is we are going to have a look exactly at how we use a calculator. So in your calculator, you need to click mode, um, no, shift menu or shift mode. Okay, I think. Or maybe you just click mode. I'm not sure. But it should say, one of them will say degree, one of them will say rad. We want to be in rad form. If you've got one of the new calculators like me, you have to click shift menu. And then number two says angle unit. And then we want to be in radians, okay? Then you should see a little box in the top, which says R. Okay, you should be in radians, okay? Now, the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes in our Pure One exam is we have to change from radians and degrees. Please make sure your calculator is in the right mode for that specific question. Okay, that's one of the biggest mistakes is people forget to change the mode. Please make sure you change the mode. Okay? Right then. So if we were to do cos of 4 pi over 3 in radians, okay, we're going to get minus a half. Okay? And then if we do sine of minus 7 pi over 6, we end up with a half. Now, as we learned from yesterday, sine of minus 7 pi over 6 is a half, okay? Remember when we use symmetry, we're going to use symmetry again, okay? And if you think about our sine graph, okay, it goes like this. Um, minus 7 pi over 6 is just over, so you think, minus 7 pi over 6, and this is where we need to get comfortable with fractions, okay? Minus 7 pi over 6, well, this here is going to be 6 pi over 6, isn't it? Okay, so minus 7 pi over 6 is going to be about here. So, we know that's a half. We also know the difference is 1 over 6 pi. So that means, where else, if it asks you for the positive value, okay, where else? Well, this is also the same as sine of pi over 6. And, and if you think this is pi over 6, the gap, and this is 6 over 6 pi, it's also the same as sine of 5 pi over 6. We should be really confident at making these um, conclusions. Okay, these aren't assumptions, this is fact. We should be really comfortable at doing this, okay? And if we're not, um, because of the fractions or because we're not sure with the symmetry of the graph, we will do more practice. Okay, so what I'm going to draw is the sine graph. Okay, I'm going to draw it big for us. Okay, again, these lines are straight. If you see them as wonky, it's your eyesight. Okay, so. Oh, that's terrible. But we know our maximum is 1 and our minimum is minus 1. We know this is pi. We know this is 2 pi. Okay, now this is pi over 2. Uh, 3 pi over 2 and again on this side it's going to be exactly the same but it's going to be negative okay so we should all be really confident with this now if I said to you sine of minus 7 pi over 6 okay so this means our x coordinate is minus 7 pi over 6. What is this equivalent to? I want another 3 that could also give me the same answer. Okay? So, first of all, first of all, minus 7 pi over 6 is a top-heavy fraction, isn't it? It's an improper fraction. So let's just think about this minus... 7 over 6. This is an improper fraction. If I was to make this a proper fraction, this is going to be 1, well it's negative 1 and 1 over 6, isn't it? 
okay? Negative 1 and 1 over 6. So this is negative pi plus a sixth of a pi, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's negative 1 over 6 pi. So if our negative pi is here, we then need to go 1 over 6 in, don't we? So this is going to be negative 1 over 6. Negative 1 and a sixth pi. We just write it for convenience, minus 7 pi over 6, okay? But that's what that's technically saying. So the gap between minus pi and negative 1 over 6 pi is in fact 1 over 6 pi. So this is here, this gap is 1 over 6 pi. Or I could write it as pi over 6. So if I go up, okay, it crosses here. Now remember then, if I draw that line all the way across, okay, we can see it crosses one, two, three, four. Okay, so then, what we have is we know that this gap needs to be pi over six. So this gap is pi over six, so here I'm going to have minus two pi, and it's going to be um, plus pi over 6, okay? Because the gap, if I minus it, I'm just going to, if I minus pi over 6, it's going to get, so I need to add it on, don't I? Okay? But if this is over 6, I know two whole ones is 12 over 6, isn't it? So what I'm doing is I'm doing this effectively in my head. So I have minus 12 over 6 pi, because minus 12 over 6 is two whole ones. Remember, when I add or take fractions, they need to have the same denominator. And I'm going to add 1 over 6 pi, okay, which is going to give me minus 11 pi over 6. So that will also give me the answer of a half, won't it? Then if I go across here, this is 0, so I need to 0 plus pi over 6, which is just pi over 6. And then I have pi, and to get to here, I need to take away pi over 6. Now, pi is 6 over 6, isn't it? One whole one is 6 over 6. So if I take away, if I think pi minus 1 over 6 pi, they have to have the same denominator. Pi I can write as 6 pi over 6 minus pi over 6. 6 pi over 6 is one whole one. Again, I'm not changing the actual quantity. I'm just writing it in a format that will help me to manipulate it, which is going to give me 5 pi over 6. All of these, in fact, give me, because I know pi over 6 is sine of 30, and I know sine of 30 equals a half. Okay, remember GCSE, how would we find the arc length in degrees? What would we do? Absolutely. So we would remember find the proportion. So we know it's a length. Okay, we know that we have um, 2 pi r, or pi d is the circumference, okay, the length. If we just want arc length, remember if we want part of that, we do theta over 360, because that's the proportion we wanted, multiplied by 2 pi r. Okay? This time, in radians, instead of theta over 360, Okay, um, instead of over 360, it's going to be over 2 pi because we're not in degrees anymore. We're in, so what's actually going to happen is we're going to have theta over 2 pi because theta is still our angle. No matter if we measure it in degrees or radians, it's still that angle, isn't it? Over 2 pi times 2 pi r. Now, I wonder, could we simplify that? Absolutely. It's just going to be theta r. Now, I suggest you do not remember that. I suggest you remember how to do this and cancel. Okay? So that you fully understand. It's good, you, yeah, if you want to remember that, but you need to be able to how to get, how do you get here? Perfect. So, 
Some really nice and simple examples. Now, find the lengths of the arc of the circle with radius 5.2, given that the arc subtends an angle of 0.8 radians at the centre of the circle. Now, we know if we're finding arc length is going to be theta over 2 pi times 2 pi r. They're going to cancel, so arc length is theta r. Our theta is 0.8, and our radius is 5.2. I'm literally going to multiply them together. 0.8 times 5.2, and I'm going to get 104 over 25. It hasn't told us how many significant figures or degree, um, significant figures or decimal places, but the answer is 4.16, and this is in centimetres. Okay, the next question. An arc AB of a circle with radius 7 and centre 0 has a length of 2.45 centimetres. Find the angle AOB subtended by the arc at the centre of the circle. Now, I know the first one was easy, but I would always recommend drawing a picture. So I'm going to draw a picture. Okay, I have an arc AB. Um, I know my radius is 7. My centre is unknown and my arc length is 2.45 and everything is in centimetres. Now I know from the previous question that arc length, okay, oh, I don't know why I've put an E there, equals r theta. So I know that 2.45 is my arc length and that equals 7 times my theta. So what am I going to do? Rearrange 2.45 divided by 7 is 7 over 20. So I know that theta equals 7 over 20, um, which is, I could also write then that theta equals 0 0.35 rad, because we are in radians. So then, um, an arc AB of a circle centre O and radius R subtends an angle theta, radians at O. The perimeter of the sector AOB is P, express R in terms of P and theta. Nice and easy. Step one, draw the diagram. Okay, this is your A, this is your B, we have our angle, theta, we know this is our radius, and um, this is a, uh, your arc length, isn't it? Okay, arc length is R times theta, okay? So that gives us this length here. When we do perimeter, it's the whole shape, so we need to add two lots of R, don't we? So, that means that our perimeter P is R theta plus 2R, because perimeter is around the whole shape. And if I have here, I have one radius, plus two radius, plus our arc length, which we know is R theta. Okay? Then it says express R in terms of P and theta, so it wants R equals. Okay? So, um, I can see that on the right-hand side of the equation, there's a common factor of R. So I'm going to factorise out my common factor of R, okay? And then, if I want R equals, I'm going to divide both sides by theta plus 2. So it's R equals P over theta plus 2. And now we have expressed R in terms of P and Q. If it ever says expressed R, it means it wants R equals. Okay, next question. The border of a garden pond consists of a straight edge AB of length 2.4 metres and a curved part C as shown in the diagram. The curved part is an arc of a circle, centre O and radius 2 metres. Find the length of C. Okay, so this one's slightly different. So what we're going to do is, first of all, what do we need to find? We need to find this length of C here. This is what we need to find. Okay. How do we... Oh, wow. Where's that gone? Here it is. How do we find this length? Well, this is arc length. So, I need this angle. This angle, theta, times by the radius 2. So, to find the arc length... I need the radius times theta. Currently, we know the radius is 2, but we don't know what theta is. Okay. The other information it's given me is it's given me a triangle with three sides. 
What rule do I know to find an angle with a triangle of three sides? So our favourite rule is the cosine rule. I can use the cosine rule to find this angle, okay? Once I find this angle here, to find the blue angle, I'm going to do 2 pi minus that angle, and that's going to give me the blue angle, isn't it? So, cosine rule, we know that cos of A equals... B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. And again, um, you get to, mem you just find that you'll know it the more questions you do, but you have this available. So this is going to equal, remember our A is opposite. This is our length A and B and C in this case are the same. So I'm going to get um, 2 squared plus 2 squared minus 2.4 squared over 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, so in my calculator, I'm just going to write the whole thing. 2 squared plus 2 squared. I know that's A, but I'm not sure what 2.4 squared is off the top of my head. Over 2 times 2 times 2, which is A. So I'm going to get cos of A equals 7 over 25. Now remember, we're working in radians. Please make sure your calculator is radians. To find A, you're going to do the inverse of 7 over 25. So I'm literally in my calculator going to click shift cos answer. And then I'm going to get A equals 1.287, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to keep that in my calculator. I'm not rounding. Please never round. Remember, to find this blue angle here, okay, I need to do 2 pi minus our angle A, which we've just found is 1.28. So I'm literally going to type in the angle. 2 shift pi minus answer, okay? And I get 4.9961830 okay? Again, I'm going to keep this in my calculator because finally, I now can continue with, so that equals 2 times our 4.99 blah, 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 okay? So I'm just going to do 2 times answer in my calculator and I get... 9.992366179, okay? Let's say the question said three significant figures. One, two, three. It is, in fact, going to be 9.99 centimetres, okay? And we always write our units. Now, please make sure you keep this in your calculator. Um, I did a question yesterday where um, I rounded a little bit too early and I got the answer wrong. Um, in the last one because I rounded early so and it wasn't even you know sometimes in the mark scheme they give you between a certain value it wasn't even that so please 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 use answer okay then so off you go you've got your own question to do just so you know you might have to use the sine rule you might have to use cos rule you might have to use area of a triangle that is not um, a right angle and what it's asking us to find, it's asking us to find the arc, the length of the arc BD. Okay, the length of the arc BD, that part there. So we know we need arc length. Arc length, as we know, is R theta. Our radius equals 8 and theta equals 0 0.7. So... Our answer is going to be 8 times 0 0.7, which is going to be 28 over 5, which is 5.6 centimetres. Please make sure you give units. It then says the perimeter of R, given your answer to three significant figures. Well, to find the perimeter of R, Okay, I'm going to draw R because I really like to draw these questions again. Okay, perimeter means we want to find all the sides. So we need this red side here, which believe it or not, we've just calculated because it's the arc length. We need this blue side. Now this blue side is calculating by doing 11 minus the radius. Okay, so 11 minus the radius, which in this case is 11 minus 8. 11 minus 8 is in fact 3. So I know that this is 3. 
okay? And I know that this is 5.6. Then what I need to do is I need to calculate this length here, which is my green side, okay? To calculate the green side, because I've got the blue and the red side. To calculate the green side, I have the whole triangle and I know if I have two sides in an angle, I can find another side using our favourite cosine rule. Here is my triangle. This is 11, this is 8. I want to find the length of this side and this is 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.7 radians. Now then, the cosine rule. A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. So I know that A squared equals 8 squared plus 11 squared minus 2 lots of 8 times 11 cos of 0 0.7. Now I'm going to type this whole thing into my calculator so that I do not make any mistakes. And remember when you're substituting, please make sure that you use brackets and make sure that you're calculated in radians because we've got cos radians. So I get... I get a squared equals 50.38, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to put, keep that in my calculator, and in my calculator now, I'm going to get root answer. So I'm going to get a equals 7.09843, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I now know that this green part is 7.098. Finally, what I now have to do is I now have to add all of the sides up together. So I know the red part is 5.6, that wasn't rounded, that was exact. The blue part is three, again, it wasn't rounded, that was exact. And then we have A, which we know is 7.098. I'm gonna keep that in my calculator. I'm then gonna add three and add 5.6. I get a total of 15.698. 15.698, three decimal places. In the question it says three significant figures. So one, two, three, it's higher, so I'm going to change that. So this is going to equal 15.7 centimetres to three significant figures. So just had we had um, arc length, we also have sector area. Now if we remember, if we were using degrees, we would have theta um, over 360 multiplied by pi r squared, because pi r squared is the area, we're looking for part of the area, which is theta over 360. So if we're using radians, the only thing that changes is it's going to be theta over 2 pi times pi r squared. Now, what you will notice is that we can cancel the pi. So we end up with theta r squared over two, or a half theta r squared. Again, I do not recommend you learn the formula. I recommend you know how to find the area using degrees, and then you go this way, okay? There are some problem-solving questions it's really beneficial that we understand this part. So, nice and simple, okay? Um, sometimes we want the segment of an area. Now, if you think, if I want the segment of this area, I'm going to draw some pictures. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find sector area minus the area of the triangle, aren't I? Okay? Now, the segment area we know is theta over 2 pi times pi r squared minus, and remember the area of a triangle is a half AB sine C. Now, in this case, um, we are going to have our pi's cancel here. So we're going to have um, theta r squared over 2 minus, and a and b are in fact r, so that's going to be r squared sine theta over 
2. Okay? So if we wanted to, we could actually have r squared over 2 bracket theta minus sine theta. Now, personally, I wouldn't ever recommend um, doing this, okay? If I was you, when we are looking at these types of questions, draw out what you need, write the formula, and go from there, okay? But at least you know that you can manipulate any of these. So here we go. A few examples for us to do. Textbook examples. In the diagram, the area of the minus sector AOB is 28.9. Given that the angle is 0.8 radius, find the value of R. So first of all, we know the area is theta R squared over 2. This is what sector area equals. We've been told the sector area is 28.9, and we know that theta is 0.8. We know the radius is r squared over 2. So it's just a classic rearranging problem. So I'm going to get 28.9 multiplied by 2, which gives me 57.8 equals 0.8 r squared. I'm going to divide it by 0.8. So then I'm going to have 72.25 equals r squared. To be honest, if it was any more than two decimal places, I would keep it as a fraction. I would keep it as 289 over 4 equals r squared. So r equals the square root of 289 over 4. So root answer is going to give me 17 over 2. So r equals 17 over 2. Now remember, we do have a plus or minus 17 over 2. But we're working in positive degrees. Remember, because, you know, this is, um, sorry, positive lengths. We can't have a negative radius, can we? Okay, so it is just 17 over 2 or 8.5. Now, it's a nice, easy number, so we are allowed to do that. Okay, next one. A plot of land is in the shape of a sector of a circle, radius 55. The length of the fence that is erected along the edge of the plot to enclose the land is 176 metres. Calculate the area of the plot of land. Okay, there's a few things going on here. This is a plot of land in the shape of a sector. There is a fence which encases all of it. Okay, so this fence is made up one two, three. So I know that the fence is the perimeter, which equals 176. So 176 equals 55 plus 55, because that's two parts, plus arc length, which we know is r theta. In this case, we get 176 equals 110 plus 55 theta. I now need to find theta, so I'm going to get 65 equals 55 theta, 65 over 55 equals theta, okay, and 65 divided by 55 simplified is 13 over 11, so great, I've now found theta, 13 over 11 rads, now if I do press SD, it's, you know, it's a bit of a recurring decimal, um, I'm going to keep it as a fraction, okay. Then the next set says calculate the area of the land. Great, so we know sector area equals theta r squared over 2. We know what theta is, we know what r is, it's a case of putting this all in. Theta is 13 over 11 multiplied by 55 squared over 2. So um, times 55 squared divide it by 2, and I'm going to get 170, uh, well, no, 1,787.5 metres squared, because we are working out the area. Okay, I've gone wrong in the question, everyone. Um, this is incorrect. Thank you for spotting that mistake. I've gone from 176 to 175. I've written the question down wrong. So this should be 176. This should be 66. 66 over 55, which is 6 over 5. So this should be 6 over 5. So if we change this, this is now 6 
over five. So we're going to get a new answer. Well done. Please be careful of mistakes like that. As you can see, really innocent mistake. It is going to cost me marks. And then divide that by two is 1,815 uh, 1, meters squared. Okay. Okay, so in the diagram above, OAB is a sector of a circle. Radius 4 metres, the chord AB is 5 metres long. Find the area of the shaded segment. So, step one, I'm going to find the area of the whole segment. Then I'm going to minus the area of the triangle, and that's going to leave me the area of the shaded segment. If I'm finding sector area, I know it's theta r squared over 2. And area of a triangle, I know, is a half AB sine C. Okay? And I like to write everything out like this. I think it's really good to really show our method and what we're doing. So we know our radius is 4. Okay. Um, the chord AB is 5 metres long. Okay, well, oh, actually, it hasn't told us what theta is. So before I even get to this stage, okay, I need to find theta. Okay, theta. I need to find theta. I've got a triangle with far, three sides labelled. The first thing I should be thinking is cos. So, cosine rule. Cos of A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared over two lots of B, lots of C. Okay, I'm going to put that into my calculator. Four squared plus four squared minus five squared all over two times four times four, which is seven over 32. So cos, shift cos, answer, seven over 32. So I get theta equals 1.35, okay? or cos to the minus 1 of 7 over 32. Now, um, it's 1.35026, blah, 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 okay? I am going to round it to 1.35, but I think... No, I'm not going to round it to 1.35. I'm going to use... I'm going to keep it as answer, okay? So, if I'm keeping this as answer... In my calculator, now that I have theta, instead of writing theta, I'm going to write bracket answer times 4 squared over 2 minus a half lots of our A and B is 4 squared because it's A times B times sine of answer to keep it all exact, okay? So, I have answer times 4 squared over 2 minus... Um, four, oh, minus a half, four squared times sine answer. Okay, that gives me 2.9958. Um, let's do three significant figures, please, um, which is going to be 3.00. 0 meters squared to three significant figures. So, um, in the diagram, AB is the diameter of a circle of radius R. And the angle BOC is theta radians. Given that, the area of AOC, AOC, okay, so this area here, Okay, given that this area is three times that of the shaded segment, and this is my shaded segment, show that three feet of minus four feet equals zero. Okay, this is a really popular question. These questions are hard. Sometimes they can get seven, six to seven marks, okay? It's really simple if we write down exactly what we know. Step one. I've got to find the area of the blue bit and the red bit, okay? The blue bit is the triangle, the red bit is the area of the segment, okay? So if we think about the blue, the blue triangle, okay? It is a triangle 
Um, if this angle is theta, what do we know about angles on a straight line? They add up to 180. But if we're in radians, it means this is actually pi. So this angle here is going to be pi minus theta. This is our radius and here's our radius. So this is radius, radius, and this is pi minus theta. We know the area of this, sorry, this is a straight line. This is a triangle. We know the area of this is a half a b sine c. Okay, so this is going to be a half times radius squared times sine of pi minus theta. Okay, so we should all be able to get to this stage. This is what we know. And all we're doing is substitution here. Okay, the next part. I have this red segment here. Now, to find the area of this red segment, I'm going to find the area of the sector minus the area of the triangle. The area of the sector is pi r squared over 2. Now, in this case, sorry, not pi, theta r squared over 2. In this case, our theta is theta and our r is r. Great news, everyone. We don't have to change that. Minus the area of a circle, we know, uh, circle, sorry, triangle, it's a half AB sine C. Okay, now in this case, um, our A and B are both our R's and our angle is theta. So we're going to have theta R squared over 2 minus R squared sine theta over 2. Okay, and again, I can manipulate this. So um, they have a r squared and a 2 that I can take out. So I'm going to get theta minus sine of theta. Now again, I'm not sure if um, this is what is best for the equation, but I'm just saying we can write this a different way. Okay, that's less complicated. Because I've taken out a common factor of r squared over 2. Okay, again, this links back to GCSE prior knowledge, rearranging equations, factorising. So then, okay, we've got our two things, and it says the area of the triangle is three times the area of the shaded segment. Okay, so this area of a triangle, I'm going to rewrite. R squared sine pi minus theta over 2 is equal to three lots of the area of the segment, which we've just figured out, three lots of r squared over two, par, uh, theta minus sine theta, okay? Now, believe it or not, what do we have to do? We have to rearrange this to show that three theta minus four sine theta equals zero, okay? This is the goal. So now, we have to rearrange. So, again, many ways we could do this. Okay? My personal favourite. Now, first of all, r squared sine theta minus pi equals um, 3 r squared bracket, theta minus sine theta, okay? Well, first things first. Um, all of this, both of them were over 2. So if I multiply everything by 2, it gets rid of it all, doesn't it? Okay? So if I multiply both sides by 2, and remember, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. That's going to cancel this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by r squared because they both have an r squared in common. Guess what's going to happen? We're going to cancel them, okay? So now I'm left with sine pi minus theta equals... I'm actually going to expand this bracket. I don't know why I put it in a bracket in the first place. It's not actually going to help me. But it did a little bit. 
3 theta minus 3 sine theta. Okay? Okay, so far it's looking good. Okay, because if we go back to our original equation, we don't have any r squareds. We've got some thetas, but we've got sine thetas. Okay, great. But sine pi minus theta. Okay, sine pi minus theta. How is that? You know, this equation doesn't have a pi. What do we know about this in terms of the graph? Can we write, do you remember earlier we wrote sine minus 7 over 6 pi and that was the same as sine pi over 6? How else could we write sine pi minus theta in still the same as sine that's going to give us our same value? Okay, so here's the graph of sine. Sine pi minus theta, okay, is the same as writing sine of minus theta plus pi. We actually have two transformations here, both inside the bracket, which are both affecting x. Okay, so let's, first of all, if we have minus theta, this is a reflection in the y-axis, okay? So, sine of minus theta is actually going to look like this, okay? Then, what are we going to do? We are going to plus pi, which means we're going to translate it to the left pi pi which is 90 uh, sorry 180 so we translate it to the left now okay remember this graph here is sine of minus theta and then we've got to take it to the left 180 pi okay so actually what do we get it is sine okay so sine of pi minus theta is just the same as sine of theta Okay, so sine of pi minus theta is sine of theta equals 3 theta minus 3 sine theta. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away sine theta from both sides, okay, and then I'm going to get my final answer of 0 equals 3 theta minus 4 sine theta. So, um, if I was to rewrite that, 3 theta minus 4 sine theta equals 0. Therefore, proved. Okay then, so the last example I'm going to go through. So, find the length of RKB. I know it's crossed out, but... We know arc length is r theta, so it's just going to be 0 0.7 multiplied by 9. Okay, which is going to give us 63 over 10, 6.3. Okay, and again, please remember your units. Then it says, find the area of the sector OAB. We know sector area is r squared theta over 2, which is going to be... 9 squared times 0 0.7 over 2. So 9 squared times 0 0.7. Divide that by 2 is going to give us 28.35 centimetres squared. The line AC shown in figure 1 is perpendicular to OA. Okay, so we know this is 90 degrees, but um, if we're writing this in terms of radians, we know it's pi over 2. Um, and it says find the length of AC. So um, we can actually use sine rule. Perfect. So we know 0 0.7 plus pi over 2, so we need to know this angle. We know angles um, in a triangle add up to 180, which is actually pi. So I'm going to get 
pi minus pi over 2 minus 0 0.7 is going to give us that angle C. So shift pi minus pi over 2 minus 0 0.7 is going to give me 0 0.8707 um, dot 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 dot. I'm going to keep that exact, okay? The other way we could write that, this angle, is pi over 2 minus 0 0.7. I am going to keep that exact. So, um, and remember, when we use the sine rule, we've got our matching pairs. So, we have 9 and this angle here, which I'm going to keep as pi over 2 minus 0 0.7. Okay, I know it's 0 0.87 something. And then, my other matching pair, because it wants us to find the line AC... I'm going to use this one here. So remember, when we're using sine rule, I'm going to have... Um, so I know that 9 over sine of pi over 2 minus 0 0.7 equals our length AC, which I'm calling X, over sine of 0 0.7. So to find X, I'm going to get 9 lots of sine 0 0.7 divided by sine pi over 2 minus 0 0.7. And this way, I know that everything I'm writing is completely exact. So I'm going to get 9 lots of sine 0 0.7 divided by sine pi over 2 minus 0 0.7. Again, if I wanted to, I could put in there 0 0.8707, but it might give me a rounding error. So I then get my answer of x, which is 7.580 dot, dot, dot. It wants two decimal places, so 7.58 centimetres. Just out of curiosity, I'm going to see what happens if I did put the other one, if I did not do it exact, and I put x equals 9 sine of 0 0.7, and let's say I rounded this to one decimal place, if I then put sine of 0 0.9, because 0 0.87 rounded to one decimal place, if I did do that, okay, 0 0.9, my answer becomes 7.40. That is not the same as 7.58, okay? This is why it's really important we need to be exact. The last part of the question says, find... Uh, the region H is bounded by the arc AB and the lines AC and CB. Find the um, area of H. Again, step one. Find the area of the triangle minus the area, uh, sorry, the sector area. Area of a triangle we know is a half AB sine C minus uh, the area of the um, sector which is r squared theta over 2. That's going to give me, now I know my a and b is my radius, so I'm going to have a half 9 um, oh, wait there a minute nope, it's not this easy I actually, because um, this is 9 but I do not know what this length is so I need to use sine rule again Okay, or I could use cos rule because I don't actually have that length, so I need to do that. So it's okay, I'm going to do that up here. So remember, in this triangle so far, what do we know? We know that this is 7.58 to two decimal places. We know this is nine, we need this one. Um, oh, actually, no, we don't. To find the area, as long as we use this angle, pi over two. Oh, it's a right angle triangle. Okay, this is great, everyone. I can actually just do 9 times 7.58 divided by 2 because it's a right angle. That's great. Okay, so I don't even need to use that. So I'm going to get 9 times 7.58 over 2. Um, 9 times 7.58 over 2 is going to give me the area minus, and we've already worked out our area here which is 28.35 so I'm going to get 9 times 7.58 over 2 uh, minus 
28.35. So my answer is going to be 5.76 centimetres squared. Now, another good point. For part C, I use a sine rule. We completely forget pi over 2. This is a right angle triangle. I could have just used soccer toe Okay, but again, the beauty of mathematics is always more than one way to find a solution or rearrange or, you know, and especially with trig, we've got loads of formulas going on. 